Fiber Sandler upsets Apple Target, problems for Apple in the UK, and Lionel Messi delivers for Apple TV. It is Tuesday, the 1st of August, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from macOS Ken, brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by BetterHelp. Online therapy. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp dot com slash mac os can this show is also supported by people like you patrons through patreon find out more and that your support at patreon dot com slash mac os can you know how in cartoons a character will wake from sleep or being hit on the head shake their head so fast they make a cartoony cheek shaking noise then leap into some sort of action you know the noise (laughs) yeah piper sandler analyst harsh kumar did that monday in an analytical note form apple 3.0 ran part of the note he wrote hitting some pertinent points he thinks apple's gonna miss the street's expectations for revenue and earnings per share on this week's q3 earnings call by the tiniest of amounts he thinks apple will guide for meeting expectations in the september quarter he thinks worry about iphone sales in china is a bit overblown and if sales in china are soft they are likely to be easily offset by strong sales momentum in India. Not the greatest of expectations, but Kumar started his note underwater on Apple's target. Never mind that noise. Maintaining an overweight rating on Apple shares, the Piper Sandler-er used Monday's note to raise his price target on the shares by 40 bucks. It was $180. It is now 220 <laughs> made me dizzy. Apple's got screen time problems. Turns out the feature that's supposed to limit how much time kids can spend on devices isn't so much doing that. A piece from Mac Rumors brings the 411 saying screen time provides parents with settings to remotely manage a child's device, allowing them to restrict device usage to certain times, set time limits for apps, and block inappropriate content. However, some parents have complained that screen time settings sometimes reset or fail to sync across all devices within a family sharing group. In a statement on the issue to the Wall Street Journal, Apple said, Don't! But you know, with more words. Quoting the Cupertino Company, We are aware that some users may be experiencing an issue where screen time settings are unexpectedly reset, We take these reports very seriously, and we have been, and will continue, making updates to improve the situation. Apple's got watch problems in the UK, though that is just the start of Apple's UK troubles. Starting with the chronometer, the piece from the Telegraph has police across the pond complaining of accidental calls to emergency services from Apple's wearable. According to the report, the National Police Chief's Council said recent software updates to smart devices were having a significant impact on the volume of emergency calls being recorded by forces. It comes amid a reported rise in cases of people with Apple Watches dialing 999 accidentally during gym workouts. Well, there's your trouble. Tell your people to quit going to the gym. It sounds like the issue is tied to crash detection or fall detection. The former has been the source of a lot of false emergency calls here in the States. Of course, it also keeps saving lives, so you take the good with the bad? The Telegraph says lifting weights, running, and even doing yoga have all been found to activate the SOS feature on the devices after they were upgraded to detect traumatic events such as car smashes. Just like here in the States, users whose watches accidentally dial emergency services are urged to stay on the line, 
let the operator know that the call was an accident and that no help is required. From something Apple has done to something Apple might do, there was a report while I was away that had Apple threatening to pull services like FaceTime and iMessage in the United Kingdom. Nothing petty. Rather, a piece from the BBC, BB says that the company is concerned over plans to update the Investigatory Powers Act. According to the report, the UK government wants messaging services to clear security features with the Home Office before releasing them to customers. Additionally, the proposed update would let authorities demand security features be disabled without telling the public. Lots for Apple not to like in this. Points the company finds objectionable include having to tell the Home Office of any changes to product security features before they are released, the requirement for non-UK-based companies to comply with changes that would affect their product globally, such as providing a backdoor to end-to-end encryption, and having to take action immediately if a notice to disable or block a feature is received from the Home Office, rather than waiting until after the demand has been reviewed or appealed against. It's not just saying what it doesn't like, though. Apple is also saying what it won't do and why, if pushed. According to the BBC, the Cupertino company says it would not make changes to security features specifically for one country that would weaken a product for all users, some changes would require issuing a software update and so could not be made secretly, and the proposals constitute a serious and direct threat to data security and information privacy that would affect people outside the UK. Trouble of another sort for Apple in the United Kingdom, this time tied to the App Store. The Next Web ran a piece last week saying the company faces a class action suit in the UK over what is referred to as excessive App Store fees. According to the report, the suit was filed by Sean Ennis, a professor and a former economist with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. According to his argument, Apple's charges to app developers are excessive and only possible due to its monopoly on the distribution of apps on the iPhones and iPads. The charges are unfair in their own right and constitute abusive pricing. They harm app developers and also app buyers. Representing just under 1,600 developers, the suit seeks compensation in the amount of £785 million. That is just over $1 billion U.S. And what of issues between Apple and the U.K.'s troublesome offspring? I refer, of course, to these United States... A piece from 9 to 5 Max says the leads from the House of Representatives Innovation, Data, and Commerce Subcommittee have questions. Well, what do you know? They have questions about fees charged in the App Store. Kind of a twist, this one. According to a letter sent to Apple CEO Tim Cook, the reps want to know about how App Store rules are impacting American leadership in emerging technologies including blockchains, non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, and other distributed ledger technologies. Seems sort of obscure for a legislative body that can't seem to decide whether to keep the lights on half the time, but relax. This probably comes from some rich guy or guys whispering in their ears or yelling in their faces. 9 to 5 Max says the letter comes as Apple has faced criticism from the likes of Jack Dorsey, Coinbase, and others over its App Store rules. In particular, the letter says, It appears that Apple has used its App Store guidelines to increase its own profits and reduce the utility of apps in blockchains, NFTs, and other blockchain-related technology. For example... In December of 2022, Coinbase accused Apple of forcing it to remove NFT transfers from its wallet app on iOS. Coinbase claimed Apple was citing its App Store guidelines to require a 30% cut of the gas fees, a fee paid to the blockchain network to perform a given task associated with any NFT transfer. The reps have Coinbase tweeting to its users that what Apple was asking was impossible. 
Now, I will confess, I know almost nothing about blockchain and NFTs, but if a fee is paid in an iOS app, Apple gets a cut. Unless Apple and lawmakers are meant to believe that there's no money in blockchain or NFTs. Anyway, the Congress people have questions. They're looking for answers from the Cupertino company no later than the 14th of August. More news in a moment, but first a word from today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Online therapy. Therapy can't fix everything. That's not therapy's job. It's not even the therapist's job. The job of therapy and the therapist is to help you. Sometimes it's to help you address and deal with issues. Other times it's just to help you check your head. You don't go to a therapist and say, fix it. You go to a therapist for help. If you're considering that, there's better help. I like that BetterHelp is entirely online. You meet on the phone, your iPad, your computer. You don't have to go anywhere. Just fill out a questionnaire, then BetterHelp goes to work finding a licensed therapist for you. And if that therapist ends up not being a good fit, switching is easy and doesn't cost anything extra. If you feel like you could be doing better be in a better place, you can get there. Let therapy be your map with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash macOSCan today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash macOSCan. Betterhelp.com slash Mac OS can. Epic Games has thrown something of a Hail Mary in its ongoing fight with Apple. Apple Insider says the Fortnite publisher has asked the U.S. Supreme Court to force Apple to abide by a lower court's anti-steering decision, even as Apple pursues an appeal with the Supreme Court. While courts from San Jose up through the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals have sided with Apple through most of the Fortnite fight, they have said that Apple cannot keep developers like Epic from letting users know, through apps in the App Store, that they can pay less for associated services through sites other than the App Store. Letting them know would be considered steering, while Apple's rules against that are considered anti-steering. Once the Ninth Circuit said Apple had to change its anti-steering ways, the company petitioned the Supreme Court to hear its argument against the previous rulings. Apple Insider says that gave Apple at least 90 days before any changes had to be made, and it could get even longer if SCOTUS decides to hear the case. While the court decides whether to hear Apple's plea, Epic wants the court to enforce the decision that Apple is appealing. You know, there is a prayer to the patron saint of lost causes. Maybe Epic could try that too. If you're having trouble drawing a straight line with your Apple Pencil, it may not be you. It might be that third-party iPad replacement screen you got instead. A piece from Ars Technica says reports from repair shops and customers suggest that Apple Pencils no longer work properly on non-genuine Apple screens as they draw squiggly lines on a diagonal instead of straight. The piece has the CEO of UK repair firm iCorrect saying that recent iPad Pros have a memory chip that sits on the screen that's programmed to only allow the pencil functionality to work if the screen is connected to the original logic board. Whether Apple would consider this a bug or a feature is currently unknown. Ours has reached out to the company for comment. So far, it has not received one. The latest Apple Maps improvements have made their way to the Lone Star State. My download blog says the Dallas-Fort Worth area now has access to Apple's Look Around feature. That's the Cupertino company's answer to Google Street View. 
Additionally, both DFW and Houston, Texas have seen detailed 3D experiences added to Apple Maps. Customers in Houston can explore 3D models of seven landmarks, according to the report, while the DFW peeps get eight landmark models. And finally today, remember how messy the messy intro was for Apple TV? On the 17th of July, a piece from Apple Insider said, A live stream on Apple TV Plus formally revealing soccer legend Lionel Messi had joined Major League Soccer's Inter-Miami team was struck by audio problems. It was so serious, some seem to think, that it was written up in Fortune. That site said Apple TV was accused of botching Lionel Messi's unveiling in what marks a bumpy start to their historic revenue-sharing deal. I argued then that it was not the best look, but that it also didn't matter, since what people wanted to see was Lionel Messi play, not see him stand around. And for the playing, viewers seem to have shown up. Late last week, 9to5Mac ran a report that had Apple announcing big numbers for the Star Players' premiere weekend, Minus most of the numbers, of course. I mean, they are still a streaming service. What Apple said was that its three most-watched matches so far were streamed between the 19th of July and the 26th. Writing on the 27th, 9to5Mac said, although Apple did not specifically attribute the growth in viewership to anything in particular, the timing is obvious. Last week saw the arrival of football superstar Lionel Messi joining Inter Miami with his MLS debut taking place on Friday, the 21st of July. Messi played two games streamed by Apple TV between the 19th and the 26th. 9to5Mac figures Apple mentioning three games where Messi had only played two could be a good indicator that the MLS as a whole is garnering a wider audience not just games featuring the Phenom. Mac OS X, brought to you by me and sponsored by BetterHelp. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon, Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Eight zero. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Like you're unraveling a big cable knit sweater that someone keeps knitting and <laughs> 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 knitting.